Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. In this video, we're going to be talking about filters and how they're used throughout various applications in Tecla. Uh, we'll be using these filters in the model, in the drawings, and even the organizer. So first I'll show how they're used in those areas. We'll go over an example of how we can set up a filter, and then we'll go into Tecla structures and display how we can use these applications um, and, and better visualize how you can use it personally in your own workflow. So the first area it is used in is object representation within the model. So we can use these filters to colorize our model based on um, whatever filter you set up. You could um, set up a model object representation setting to colorize it by concrete material. Um, you could do the same for change order or pore number. Um, the, the possibilities are really endless. We can set up um, filters to um, quickly select objects in our model. Uh, for example, I took a snapshot of columns that were selected. Um, this would make it really easy to either change the material or the profile of those columns all at once using that filter. And we can also use filters to isolate model objects. Like if we wanted to only visualize um, our rebar that is number four, uh, we could do that quickly with a view filter. In the drawings, filters are going to be really important within our object level settings. Within those settings, um, the object level settings, we will quickly be able to give a certain appearance or annotation to um, model object groups that we define. So this is going to speed up our production process of our drawings and reduce a lot of manual editing. We'll set up filters within our categories to automatically bring in information and compartmentalize it um, so we don't have to select objects to, um, to, to get a report from them. We'll automatically bring that information in so we can just select it within our organizer. And the last application we will cover is filters within the project status visualization tool. Um, we can set up filters to give us um, an up-to-date representation within our model that compares some sort of property such as its planned um, end date or start date relative to a review date that we define within our project status tool. Before we get into the specific applications of filters, let's first cover the basics and what makes up a filter. All that a filter is is either one or a series of rules or conditions that um, that has to be met by a certain um, object in the model. And if those rules are met, it will allow us to either select it, um, represent it a certain way, give it a unique part mark on a drawing, or bring it into an organizer category, to name a few. So when you're setting up these rules, all we're doing is evaluating a property, which is just a general name of something in Tecla, like name, profile, it could be plan, start, end date, um, or one of the many um, user-defined attributes such as actual detailing and um, detailing start that are listed here on my screen. So what we do is we bring up that property and then we evaluate it with some sort of um, value that we can either type in or select from a model object. So first thing is setting up that property and that's totally dependent or this list here is totally dependent on which category we select. So the properties you see here, those are unique to the part category. If I pulled up component, bolt, weld, or any of these others below, this list here of properties would be different. So if I wanted to look at the planned start date of a model object, I would need to go to the task manager, I'm sorry, the task category here, and that would bring up properties associated with the task manager. And then I could give it a condition and value and see if those are met. Let's take an example of a cast in place column and see how that fits into these filter rules that I established. So this cast in place column filter is um, composed of three lines here. And since I've had, I have and on the right side over here for both, that means it has to meet all three of these rules I established. And so I've selected them over on the left hand side to make sure that they are active. So let's take a look at the first line. Um, if the object type is equivalent to a part, then it will meet this filter. And I'm referring to this object over on the right hand side, which is our concrete column. Um, that Tecla object is a part, so it meets that rule. It also has to meet an assembly type equal to one. 
and an assembly type of one is a cast in place type of assembly. Um, you could look on the technical user assistance to see what other assembly types there are, or you could select it from the model to determine which type of value that is. And my last one it has to meet is the prefix equal to CC, and that's available in the part properties under the cast unit tab where we can type in that value. So now let's take a look and see how these filters are used in each application in Tecla. Okay, first let's take a look at the selection filter, which I gave a glimpse at previously. Um, so in the drop down, you'll find the selection filter down here. Um, so I could click on material concrete, and what this is going to do is it's going to only allow me to select things that have a property of concrete, um, which is all I've got modeled here. So it's going to select everything. Let's take a look at something different, like a cast in place wall. Now this is only going to select my cast in place walls. You can see those are only highlighted. And here let's select you can say cast in place slabs. Um, you can see only those um, are selected now. So that's kind of how the filter works. Um, so if I needed to modify the material of all of these slabs to be, let's say, um, 3500, you see how I can easily access those and, and change that material if I need to update that. OK, so I'm going to quickly show how our filters can be used with model visibility. Um, model visibility can be accessed through our mini toolbar. Um, and if you roll over this, it'll say visible object group. Um, so I could pull in the drop down a filter for cast in place beam, and now it'll only show my cast in place beams. Um, I can pull up cast in place slab, it's only going to show my slabs there. Um, so I'm just going to show a few applications of how we can use this with, uh, with rebar and concrete. Um, so, for example, I made a filter that would detect rebars that have a diameter or size of number four. So if I click on that, now it's only going to show my rebar that's number four. Um, I set one up to detect straight bars, so now it'll only show my straight bars. Or I could do the same thing for bent bars, I'll click on that. And just so you know, these can be accessed um, in the view properties here um, by going to this object group, and I can see the filter setting I have set up um, for my rebar bent bar. Next, let's take a look how filters are used with model representation, or essentially how everything is colored in the model. Um, we can access model representation um, through the mini toolbar as well if we go here. To, and then once we hover over this, it'll say representation. Um, so now I can pull up you know, different settings of how I want to colorize my model. Like I could color it by what type of concrete material it is, or I could color it by concrete pore phase or I could color it by pore number and I would need to flip over to my pore view to enable this. So now it's going to color it by whatever pore number it is right here. And so out of the box we'll have several representation settings available for you and you can add your own in here. Um, so this is a good tool to use rather than changing the class of each individual part um, to, to change colors in your model. It just speeds up that process of visualization.